Following almost a century of weak Khmer kings, internal rebellions, and constant fighting between Khmer troops in, in Cambodia and neighboring ethnic groups, in 1863 the Kingdom of France easily overtook Cambodia as part of their Asian campaign and established it as a French colony in Southeast Asia. At the beginning of colonization, the French were not especially demanding, but as time went on, French officials became eager to profit off of Cambodia's wealth and began reforms that removed power and wealth from the King of Cambodia and placed it into that of the colonial government. At the start of the 20th century, the Kingdom of Cambodia had fallen under harsh and unforgiving times, prompting many to begin their quest for independence and French decolonization. Starting in the 20th century, France began to take a firmer grasp and to complete control of Cambodia. New imperialist policies economically favored the French by eliminating any self-sufficient industries and replacing them with raw material exports. In addition, native Cambodians had to pay among the highest taxes in any European colony, hurting indigenous Cambodian farmers. Despite all this, Cambodia experienced relatively few nationalist movements and resistance against the French, which was mainly due to a lack of educational standards throughout Cambodia. So unlike those in Vietnam and those in Myanmar, no education system was ever set up in Cambodia, which therefore led to low literacy rates and prevented people from being educated about uh, Khmer nationalism. However, among the French educated Cambodian elite, the Western ideas of a democracy and self-rule, as well as French restoration of monuments such as Angkor Wat, uh, a primary temple, created a sense of pride and awareness of Cambodia's once powerful status in the past. Newspapers like the Nagara Vatata, uh, began showing nationalist and Buddhist feelings. Although the seeds for independence were planted, World War II would come to change everything about Cambodia's quest for independence. In the fall of France to Germany, Japan took control of Southeast Asia, but allowed the colonial government to continue its rule. The French placed 16-year-old Prince Norodom on the Cambodian throne, believing he would be easy to control. However, the French underestimated the young king's political skills, and nearing the end of the war, Japan overthrew the colonial government and pressured Cambodia to declare independence. This was short-lived, as immediately after the war, France reasserted its control over Southeast Asia. However, now that Cambodians had enjoyed a brief independence period, nationalist movements and exter external conflicts would pull the French out of Cambodia and help them achieve independence. Cambodia following the war was chaotic. The Free French under Charles de Gaulle were determined to recover Indochina. Khmer nationalism started emerging throughout Cambodia, posing a significant challenge to the French. Around the same time Khmer nationalism began appearing, France had to deal with another problem, Vietnam. In North Vietnam, the nationalist leader of communist guerrilla forces Ho Chi Minh would not allow French intervention to control Vietnamese affairs. In 1945, Ho Chi Minh declared a new Vietnamese state, and by 1947, France and Vietnam had begun a war. Conflict with Vietnam left France unable to control the push for independence in Cambodia. So in 1949, France granted Cambodia significant autonomy, though some aspects remained under French control. France by no means wanted to give Cambodia independence, but by the end of World War II, French resources were exhausted, their economy was in turmoil, and didn't have the ability to both fight in Vietnam and deal with violent Cambodian nationalists like the Khmer Isarik nationalists, making them think about decolonizing Cambodia. Independence was finally in sight. In 1949, Cambodia gained the right to even more self-rule and the newly formed Democratic Party took control of the Cambodian National Congress. In addition, exile leader Sa Nog Thanh returned and restarted a widespread Khmer nationalist movement with the Khmer Isarak to remove all French troops from Cambodia and gain complete autonomy. King Nordram's public image began to deteriorate as people saw him as a puppet to the French. He was scapegoated. Seeing this, he took complete control over Cambodia and traveled to France and he tried to negotiate a deal with France, uh, which would give Cambodia complete independence. His attempts were at first unsuccessful, but from spreading Cambodia's plight throughout Western media and also propagating it, France, seeing their deteriorating uh, control over Indochina, began preparing to let go of Cambodia, Laos, and Vietnam. Norodrom returned to Phnom Penh as a hero, and Cambodia's Independence Day is celebrated on um, November 9th. When it was initially on November 9th, 1953, with a new Cambodian government.
Even though Cambodia had now achieved independence, they now had a large variety of political and economic problems to face. Although Nordam Shianuk had become revered inside Cambodia, he began to take all the power and become an authoritarian figure. He desired to rid the country of all opposition parties. And thanks in part to his brutal tactics, he stayed elected until he was overthrown in 1970. Cambodia, for the most part, was never politically stable. The French had never educated the Cambodians, so when they left, a huge void came that no one was able to fill, making way for so many governmental problems in the future. Cambodia had never really been involved with the rest of the world and didn't really have any nations other than France involved with their independence. Keeping up with this overall isolation, Cambodia remained neutral during the Cold War and supported neither the Communists or the Americans. However, due to growing poverty and economic problems, Sihanouk was overthrown by Communists, led by Pol Pot, one of the most ruthless dictators of all time. Being an atheist, Pol Pot outlawed all religion and dreamt of returning to Cambodia's agrarian past, and therefore banned everything Western, even medicine. He emptied cities, putting its people into collective farms. Through forced labor, starvation, and torture, Pol Pot executed over a quarter of the Cambodian population. However, Pol Pot foolishly attacked Vietnam, who retaliated in the Cambodian-Vietnam War, killing millions more. Cambodia was under Vietnamese control until 1992, and to this day is one of the most corrupt and unstable nations in the world. In addition, the French had never educated the Cambodian people in government like they had in neighboring countries, making politics a new ground for them, and never being able to properly self-rule. The economy never properly recovered either. Industry and manufacturing isn't very large in Cambodia, and for the most part is still dependent on raw material export. Overall, the French decolonization of Cambodia led to a large number of problems that continue to this day. Pol Pot's atrocities turned the US and even other communists against them. While we can never know whether Cambodia would have been better off with French rule, it is safe to say that the instability of Cambodia, the genocide by Pol Pot, and the atrocities of the Khmer Rouge are the result of long feelings of unresolved Khmer nationalism that derived from colonial oppression by the French.